So far we've only been looking at Fourier series on some fixed interval minus L to L. Uh, that is, we've, we've said that our, our Fourier series is something like this. It's some, some with some coefficient. Uh, and then we, 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 we set it on some arbitrary interval of length L, so from, from minus L to L. And where our coefficients were given by uh, this right here. F of x e to the minus i n pi x over oh, dx. Okay, but one question we could ask is, well, maybe maybe I don't like dealing with periodic functions. It's it's it's, it's you know it's a very limiting constraint. What if we took the limit where l goes to infinity, the limit where our Fourier series uh, is no longer just describing some fixed interval, but is describing the whole real line. And that's what I want to do in this video. I want to look at how we do that and what we get out of it. And, and, and spoiler alert, we're going to get the Fourier transform out of it. Uh, but uh, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's start from the beginning. So uh, first things first, how, how, are, how are we going to do this? Well, I'm, I'm going to define a couple terms which are going to uh, hopefully make this whole process a little bit more easy. So I'm going to say, I'm going to define this kn as being equal to pi n over l. And so we have we have pi n over l's everywhere. And so I'm, I'm just defining this kn to simplify things. And, and, and one thing to note is that these kn's define a grid. And so what we're summing over n's that are going from minus infinity to infinity. And so these, these kn's that I've just defined really describe a, a grid that goes everywhere um, or, or I guess that, that sort of spans, you know, in all, in all directions here with a width, with a, with a delta k that's given by pi over L. And so, 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 so what we, we've defined this grid, uh, which in the limit where L becomes very large, the limit that we're looking at, the spacing between these grid points becomes arbitrarily small. Okay. Um, that's kind of interesting. Uh, you know, why, why did I do that? Well, we'll see. Um, the, the other thing I'm going to define is I'm going to say um, f of c is uh, is equal to integral minus l to l, f of x e to the minus i c x. And, and if you don't like c, don't worry. This is just some, some dummy thing. Um, you know, uh, I've, I've only introduced this just because, you know, I, I don't want to put k everywhere. You know, that this is just some parameter that we can put in this function. Uh, so uh, let's rewrite our, our, our Fourier series then in, in terms of these new variables here. Uh, well, our coefficient cn, what's going to happen with that? We're going to have that our, our cn's are going to become, what, it's going to still be 1 over 2 pi, or, or rather 1 over 2 l. But then this integral right here, we can write as f, this f right here of kn, f of kn. Okay, so that, that's, a, that's a nice way of writing our coefficients. Um, what's next? Well, we also want to, I mean, th those are our coefficients. Let's rewrite the whole series in terms of this now. So our whole series is going to be f of x equal to our sum n equal minus infinity to infinity. Our coefficients, which are what? Which are f of kn over 2L multiplied by e to the i k n x. Okay, uh, that's all. That's all perfectly fine. But let's let's notice now that we, we you know we have this pesky pesky L out in front. Um, but actually, we can rewrite that L in terms of this delta k. And and how can we do that? Well, we can say that uh, we we can notice that one over 2L which is what we have right here, is equal to delta k over 2 pi. And why is that true? Well, that's true because we have, uh, we, have we, you know, we have delta k back here, uh, and you can divide by pi, divide both sides by 2, and you get that. Okay, uh, fine. So that means that our f of x, our Fourier series for f of x is now equal to sum n equal minus infinity to infinity. And then we have what we have a one over two pi 
1 over 2 pi coming from this. Uh, we have f of k n e to the i k n x and delta k. Okay, you know this is all fine, I and mean, we haven't done anything radical, right? We've we've just relabeled some stuff, um, and written things in this form. But I mean, this is still exactly the same as the Fourier series we had before. Now, however, things are in the perfect form where we can take that limit where l goes to infinity. And why does that make sense now? Well, this right here looks exactly like a Riemann sum. So, 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 wait a minute. What's what's a Riemann sum again? A Riemann sum is just saying that well, if if we want to take the integral of some function here, what what can we do? We can we can discretize it. We can define some grid of points, and then we can just take the we can then we can take that point times some width, and in that way we're adding up a bunch of rectangles, and that's really what an integral is, right? We're just adding up a bunch of rectangles, and in the limit where l goes to infinity, well, in that limit, delta k shoots down to zero because we have delta k going like 1 over l. And so as l blows up, delta k goes to 0. And this exactly becomes an integral. And, and that's really that's really the crux of what happens, is what of what is happening right here. When, in, in that limit, l going to infinity, this thing right here is becoming a Riemann sum. This thing is becoming an integral. And so what happens then? Uh, well, we have our 2 pi out in front. But now this sum and this n uh, becomes an integral. So we're going to have some integral, and we're integrating over the entire grid of kn's, which goes from minus infinity to infinity. We have f of k, and we have e to the i k x d k. And so we've done it. We, 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 we've done it. We've derived the Fourier transform from Fourier series. And, and we've done it by cleverly rewriting our Fourier series uh, so that we get it exactly in terms of, um, in, ter in, in, in terms that make it look like a Riemann sum, such that when L goes to infinity, uh, it looks just like an integral. And, and, and in fact, it is an integral. And so. What's the what's the takeaway here? Our, our our new expression for we could call it Fourier series on the real line, or, or we could just say the Fourier transform. Is that it's one over two pi f of k e to the minus i k x d k and actually it's plus right. All right. We, we, we've done it, and, and maybe just to, and, and well, wait a minute, what, what's this f of k again? Well, we defined it on the other page. The f of k is going to be integral uh, minus infinity to infinity, because l is going from uh, infinity, minus infinity to infinity, f of x, e to the minus i, k, x, d, x. And we've got it. We've, we've, we've discovered our Fourier transform by, by looking at our Fourier series.